our storms do not separate us from God. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Sea of Galilee is actually an inland lake, but it is a place, since it sits in the middle of a dry, arid land, it's an area where storms can pop up, very similar to what one experiences when one is in Florida, the mid-afternoon storm that can be violent, and you can go literally from blue skies to fierce winds and rain, with winds and waves up to 10 feet high. Now, the Gospel of Mark has a simple, matter-of-fact way of describing the story, while Luke gives us a little more in his chapter 8, that Jesus had been ministering to many people and had settled for a nap as they had crossed to the other side of the sea. The disciples, who after all had had experiences on this lake, many of them were former fishermen of the Sea of Galilee, were nevertheless terrified. Panic filled their minds, and water begins to fill the boat. And where is Jesus in all of this? Why isn't he doing anything? He's asleep at the stern. And they go to him and say, Do you not care that we are perishing? What Jesus says to the storm should also be said to the disciples' hearts. Silence. Be still. And then the storm quit. And then the disciples say to one another, Who is he? They've seen him teach. They've seen the miracles. But they haven't answered the crucial question. Is he truly God? In every moment of our lives. It's a question that we need to ask ourselves when the storms of life nevertheless come. Anxiety will give us a ready answer. No. Our boat is sinking and we are left alone in charge of saving ourselves. There's, we shouldn't hold out hope. The rain will never end. No one really cares about us. But yet there's a spirit within us that whispers, yes, Someone does care about us in the midst of the storms of life. Jesus was at the stern of the ship. God is not that distant from us either. No matter how the storm rages, he will not let us drown in our difficulties. God is present and powerful, and God cares about every detail of our lives. The disciples experienced a complete physical calming of a physical storm. On this side of heaven, we may have not necessarily physical storms, though violent they may certainly be, and destructive they certainly are, but rather the stronger storms of life for us tend to be emotional ones. And some of those may really not go truly away to a flat calm. Depression may come back. Panic attacks may not stop instantly, and the stress associated with our work may continue. But sometimes the storms 
do calm. And sometimes we find calm in the midst of a storm because we know with certainty two things we have with us. God is God in every moment of our lives. And with God in our lives, we can make it through anything. Let us pray. God, when storms come, we pray for your supernatural calm, either by causing the storm to cease or by giving us hope, strength, and inner stillness in the middle of it. You are God in every moment of my life. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.